Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Amanda and today we are here with a new video. I am doing little mini paintings, as you can see. They're a wee bit smaller than A7. I didn't actually measure them. I should have done, but I didn't. <laughs> I am using a Holbein gouache and a little palette that I got for £3. It's actually a serving dish, but it does a really good job at being a palette and it's one of my favourite palettes. I like the glass one as well that my mum gave me, but this one is good because it is white. Uh, the other one is obviously clear, so it's it's kind of hard to see the colours. But anyway, um, I'm using tiny small brushes as well. Just a mixture of Arteza and De La Rooney brushes. I think I've got a Winsor Newton one in there as well. Um, but sometimes I was using a brush that was far too small for what I wanted to do um, so I had to you know switch brushes to cover it really good. <laughs> so this first painting that I'm doing, I do four by the way which is great, this first painting that I'm doing is a reference from Pinterest. I will try and link all of the reference pictures that I used in the description and um, obviously it has some sky and clouds, it's got a little bit of foliage and a wee lake uh, some reflections and weeds in the front and uh, it's really nice. <laughs> I think this is actually a copy or like a study from a different painting. I don't know exactly but yeah. I oh look this is where I was using the tiny brush to f try and fill in these bushes and it ended up making it really patchy. Uh, the best thing to do with gouache when you are trying to cover a large area, especially over something that you've already painted, is to use a bigger brush and as much paint as possible so that it doesn't lift. But we live and we learn, don't we? <laughs> okay, I don't know why I made that noise, sorry. Um, but yeah, these mini paintings are awesome to do because they take less time to do and they're super fun. You need less details for it to read as whatever you're painting. So. I don't need as much details in the trees and the bushes and all the weeds and stuff to make it look like a landscape and it's just a really fun thing to do. I'm really enjoying painting with gouache recently. This, like I said, is the Holbein gouache and um, I do enjoy using the other gouaches as well but having really good quality gouache is really beneficial to my abilities to paint for some reason um, and I just got a couple of new colours as well I think I got like um, a couple of I got a Naples yellow and a yellow ochre I also got a primary cyan and I don't think I got a red I might have got a red I don't know I got a couple of colours. Anyway, I should have ordered another white because I go through white like crazy and I have no, like I, I do have white but I don't have enough left. I think that I use like two or three big dollops of white per painting so I really need to get a big tube of white. I might order one on Amazon, like a cheaper one. I don't think it matters whether the white is cheap or not as long as it's white it's fine but yeah I'm really addicted to doing little strokes to make it look like grass and stuff these days too I just love doing landscapes um I am having a little bit of struggle though trying to figure out what kind of landscapes to do because all of the pictures that I keep finding on Pinterest are quite similar so I'm trying to use some of my own reference photos so that it makes it look a little bit different so um it is hard though because I tend to lean more to trying to make it look like the photo rather than make a great painting if that makes sense. So I'm trying my best. <laughs> anyway, this second one is actually a reference photo from my dad. My dad took this from outside of his house. They live next to a field and there's trees and stuff and there's a fence because there's a farm next door so they live close to that and then uh, my dad took a picture of this. There's a rainbow in the background of this one as well. Um, there's obviously like blue skies and a little cloud and um, there's trees in the background and then there's the fence which I actually fixed. The fence is broken in the picture but I decided to fix the fence so that it made my painting look better. I don't know, it probably would have looked cool with a broken fence as well, but 
I decided just to do that and also the rainbow was a bit difficult we'll get to the rainbow in a minute but it was hard also sorry about the changing of light I'm still getting used to my camera I had it on I think I had it on a warm setting because I usually take my photography pictures in a warm setting but it's obviously better not to do that when you're recording artwork anyway <laughs> look I love doing these little trees like um recently figured out that I don't actually have to make the trees look exactly like they look in the reference photo because trees are really complicated. There's loads of branches, there's loads of like little things coming off them, there's loads of leaves, there's loads of different colours, there's light, there's shadow, they're really hard to do and I've just been really enjoying putting little dots down to indicate that there's different light and different colours of trees and stuff like that so I'm really, I'm really I'm really having a good time doing all the little dots and um, it's weird because the trees in this picture were not silhouetted. I guess it's where the light was at the time that my dad took this picture but usually when I take pictures um, of that place it's always silhouetted but it's usually at a sunsetty or sunrisey type of sunrise. Who am I joking? I never go there when it's sunrise. <laughs> um, yeah, usually it's a sunset so the trees are sometimes silhouetted but here I am putting in the fence um, I think that this, I've done these paintings twice by the way because I lost the footage the first time so I'm doing them another time and I think that the uh, this, the first one came out a lot better than this one. I don't know what I did wrong but I have changed it a little bit. In the reference photo the fence actually comes up past the grass onto the trees a little bit and I moved it down a little bit just because I wanted to compositionally wise. Although to be fair I think this makes it look very childish because um, I tend to do that. I don't overlap things enough and it looks better when you overlap things. Again, with the grassy areas, I don't know if you've watched my... In fact, no, that video won't be out yet. In my vlog, I mentioned these grassy bits, but I love just getting a long liner brush and loading it up with paint and just putting little grassy strokes on and changing the colours and stuff like that. It's really fun to do. I really like it. Um, but yeah, we are just putting in the highlights of the grassy bit in front. Again, not too realistic, not copying the reference to a T, just making it look um, like I want to make it look, like I'm trying to move the paint into where the light is. And sorry about my big head being in the way as well. Oh my God, there is uh, somebody phoning me. Hold on. Sorry, I got a phone call there. <laughs> um, that's annoying. I think that some of my videos might have corrupted from my vlog but we will see uh hopefully not i don't know what happened um anyway yes we are doing the rainbow and i think i failed with the rainbow but it's a learning experience and i'm going to tell you what i learned from doing this rainbow so basically one i should have probably looked at a real rainbow or the reference picture. I don't think I was looking at the reference picture um, for this rainbow. I was just winging it and I think I put colours in the wrong way and also in this picture the rainbow wasn't as wide as it was and I also dampened my brush which I do a lot when I'm trying to blend gouache. I get a damp brush and I go over it with the wet brush and blend it out see I'm doing it now but when you're doing this you really have to make sure that you wash out your brush quite a lot and you don't touch areas that you don't want to blend into each other if that makes sense so it was really hard to do and make uh, good anyway the other two paintings are going to be really quick this one is a picture that I have seen on Pinterest a hundred million times and I just wanted to do it really quickly just because I had seen it so many times and I thought that it would be good to paint so I decided to do it and I was struggling with this one both times that I did it I think I did a better job on the second go around but I don't think there's enough detail in it it, I don't even know if it reads as what it's supposed to be basically obviously it's a wave and a beach colliding together from above so it's like a drone picture um, of a wave and it was really hard to figure out also I cut out quite a lot of me painting this just because my head kept on getting in the way but yeah it was really hard to do I was it was really hard to get like brilliant white and obviously the white was drying into the paint below it um, so I don't know exactly what was going on there and I didn't put any detail in the sea whatsoever so it's quite 
an easy kind of painting to do but if you just want to paint something and you don't want to really think about it and you don't have to like you don't have to make it perfect and you don't need to draw anything I think these are really fun to do and yeah it was really cool and I liked putting in a little shadow and texture of the sand and just making it look a little bit better but I should have did that with the sea as well it's just flat sea basically so again I wasn't looking at the reference pictures for these I was looking at the paintings that I had did previously so I think that was where I failed big time on that anyway the next painting is me doing a copy of a reference that I took from Colross. Me and my dad went there a couple of months ago. Could have been a year ago now, I don't know. <laughs> it probably was. Um, but I think I filmed a little bit of that on one of my vlogs. Anyway, there's a picture of um, water and there's like, like a pier in the middle. So I did that and it was a really simple painting again just water you know the strokes and the and the blending still and uh, just a little pier in the middle and I really enjoyed this one it is super simple and it doesn't look like anything interesting but it was fun to paint I like doing all of the little strokes obviously I skipped ahead here I don't know why I did that probably because my lighting was being funny again but I managed to blend yellow into this quite well without it going too green. I don't know how I didn't manage to do that in my last painting that I did a couple of days ago that I didn't film. And then here we go, a little bloody shot of me doing the pier or is, I don't know, I think it was a broken pier or like there used to be a pier there. Anyway, it's cool, it's fine. Um, but I really enjoy doing little tiny details like that with a liner brush. I think it's so much fun. Anyway, here's all of the paintings, but they are there in all their glory. I think the first one is my favourite one. What do you think? Anyway, thank you for watching this video and joining me on this journey. I hope that you decide to do some mini paintings too, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.